Today is September 17th, 2024. My name is Nicodemus and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. Today we're diving into a series of groundbreaking stories that are reshaping the digital and financial landscape. From BitGo's new crypto management service, simplifying the complexities of digital assets, to the Bank for International Settlements' ambitious plans to revolutionize cross-border payments, the future of finance is being rewritten before our eyes. And for a nostalgic twist, we'll explore the rumors of a Flappy Bird revival, this time with a crypto spin. Stay tuned as we break down how these innovations are set to transform industries and challenge the status quo. But first, let's talk about that heist over at Delta Prime. Here we go again, another major hit in the world of digital money as Delta Prime loses nearly $6 million in a cyber attack. Now, Delta Prime is a platform where people can manage and invest their digital currencies, and it was hacked recently. Initially, the hackers stole around $4.5 million worth of digital coins. But the bad news did not stop there. The hackers continued their attacks, and the total money stolen climbed to almost $6 million. This attack happened just two months after another huge theft where over $230 million was taken from WazirX. Now, WazirX is a big cryptocurrency exchange in India. And in 2024, this was the second largest crypto hack so far. Now, experts say that the hackers got in by stealing a private key, and that private key let them control Delta Prime's main wallet. Once inside, they changed some important settings, and those changes allowed the thieves to take the money from Delta Prime's pools on the Arbitrum chain. This incident shows how vulnerable decentralized platforms can be. Even though these platforms are designed to give users more control over their money without relying on traditional banks, they still face serious security risks. When hackers gain access to key parts of the system, like admin wallets, they can cause massive losses quickly. Now, the method that was used by the hackers, minting an enormous number of fake deposit tokens and then cashing out a small portion, highlights the clever and dangerous techniques used in these cyber attacks. It also raises concerns about the safety of digital investments and the measures these platforms have in place to protect their users. Moreover, this is not an isolated case. With over $1.2 billion already stolen in crypto hacks this year, it's clear that the digital currency world is a prime target for cyber criminals. Experts like Michael Pearl from Cybers warn that even larger targets, like Bitcoin exchange-traded funds in the U.S., could be next. These ETFs hold billions of dollars in Bitcoin, and that makes them an attractive target for hackers. As digital currencies continue to grow in popularity, the need for stronger security measures becomes more urgent. The Delta Prime hack serves as a stark reminder that, while the world of decentralized finance offers exciting opportunities, it also comes with significant risks. Protecting your digital investments has become more important than ever, and both the users and platforms must stay vigilant to prevent future attacks. Cryptocurrency management is evolving, and Bitco is leading the charge with a new solution aimed at simplifying how digital assets are handled, offering much-needed relief to a fragmented market. At the same time, a global initiative spearheaded by the Bank for International Settlements is exploring the future of tokenization and cross-border payments, signaling a significant shift in how international finance may operate in the near future. Now, BitGo is a leading cryptocurrency custody firm, and they launched a service that streamlines the lifecycle management of digital assets. With protocols like WorldCoin, Layer0, SWE, and ZetaChain already using the service, BitGo promises to bridge a gap in a fragmented market by providing a regulated and insured platform for asset vesting, unlocking, and other on-chain activities. The service operates under BitGo Trust. That's the firm's qualified custodian platform. Now, the cryptocurrency space is no longer limited to simple transactions on the blockchain. It's grown into a programmable economy where entire financial ecosystems like tokenomics and validator systems can be created with just a few lines of code. This shift presents challenges for developers, who often delay the operational side of token management until it becomes a critical issue. And that's not just me talking. That comes to us from Thomas Chen, BitGo's head of sales. Now, Chen described the current state of token management as a, quote, tactical nightmare, where protocol developers juggle multiple tools, from non-custodial wallets to smart contracts. All this just to keep their systems running. BitGo's new service aims to alleviate these pain points by offering a consolidated, seamless platform. And then you've got the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements. The BIS is often referred to as the Central Bank for Central Bankers, and they're collaborating with over 40 financial institutions in Project Agora. This project is designed to explore how tokenization, which is the digitization of real-world assets, can improve wholesale cross-border payments. The BIS's initiative includes central banks from countries such as Japan, South Korea, and the United States. The project's goal is to integrate tokenized commercial bank deposits with tokenized central bank money on a private, public financial platform, streamlining cross-border payment transactions while tackling existing inefficiencies. 
Project Agora is expected to address legal, regulatory, and technical hurdles, including different operating hours across time zones and the repetitive nature of anti-money laundering checks. This initiative builds on the BIS's unified ledger concept, using smart contracts to improve the speed and security of payments. Both BitGo's new custodial token management service and the BIS's Project Agora reflect a broader trend towards simplifying and securing digital financial systems. BitGo's approach speaks directly to a growing need in the Web3 ecosystem, where the complexities of managing digital assets can often slow down progress and innovation. With a one-stop platform, firms can focus on building their protocols rather than dealing with the nuts and bolts of asset management. This service could be a game-changer for developers looking to scale their projects without getting bogged down in the logistical headaches. On the global stage, Project Agora is a significant move towards integrating traditional banking systems with tokenization. The partnership between central banks and private institutions demonstrates a growing acknowledgement of blockchain's potential in revolutionizing cross-border payments. However, the challenges of harmonizing regulatory frameworks, especially across multiple jurisdictions, remains a significant hurdle. The promise of tokenized assets and smart contracts could unlock new opportunities, but only if these initiatives succeed in overcoming the complexities that currently plague international finance. As BitGo simplifies the complex world of digital asset management and the BIS embarks on a bold experiment to reimagine global payments, we're witnessing the dawn of a new era in finance, one where the efficiencies of blockchain technology might finally meet the realities of a complex, interconnected world. If those efforts succeed, the financial landscape could be transformed in ways we're just beginning to imagine. Imagine your favorite old mobile game making a surprising comeback after 10 years. But wait, there's more to the story that might change how you see it. Dong Wen is the creator behind the addictive mobile game Flappy Bird, and he stepped forward to clarify recent rumors about the game's return. On September 15th, Wen made his first post on the social media platform X since 2017. In that post, he distanced himself from a company called the Flappy Bird Foundation. This group announced plans to re-release Flappy Bird after acquiring its trademark earlier this year. Wen emphasized that he didn't sell anything related to the game and he has no connection to the new release. He also stated that he does not support cryptocurrency, hinting at possible links between the game's revival and crypto projects. Back in 2014, Flappy Bird was removed from app stores by Nguyen himself, who felt overwhelmed by the game's addictive nature and the sudden fame that it brought. The game required players to navigate a bird through pipes by tapping the screen. It became a viral hit and was earning up to $50,000 a day before its sudden disappearance. Last year, Game Tech Holdings challenged Wen's claim to the Flappy Bird trademark. They argued that the trademark had been abandoned and a U.S. trademark court sided with them after Wen didn't respond. This lack of response allowed Game Tech to take over the rights. Now, there are hints that the new version of Flappy Bird might incorporate some element of cryptocurrency. Cybersecurity researcher Varun Binwale discovered deleted website pages mentioning the Solana and Ton blockchains, as well as a Flap token and a Flap to Earn mode. Michael Roberts from crypto game developer 1208 Production is involved with the project, and he hinted that more details would be revealed soon. The revival of Flappy Bird isn't just a nostalgic trip down memory lane. It could signal a new trend where classic games merge with modern technologies like cryptocurrency and blockchain. By integrating tokens and play-to-earn models, the game might attract both old fans and new players interested in earning rewards through gameplay. However, Wen's clear disassociation raises questions about the legitimacy and intentions behind this comeback. Are the new developers genuinely enhancing the game, or are they leveraging its popularity to dive into the lucrative yet volatile crypto market? As Flappy Bird prepares to take flight once again, the blend of nostalgia and new age technology could either soar to new heights or stumble amid controversy. Only time will tell if this beloved game can navigate the complex skies of cryptocurrency integration and win back the hearts of players, old and new. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. As we wrap things up, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe so you never miss an update. We'll see you next time.